Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Scott. Hey, everybody, welcome to our Wednesday Q&A webinar. I'm going to uh, give you a demo of our software, really show you what we've been working on, what's new, what's in the pipeline. And I'd like to keep it interactive. So if you guys have something you want me to talk about, pop it in the in the question panel. That way I can see, you know, some questions that you have and, and I'll address those for sure. Um, absent of getting any questions, I'm just going to kind of go through my laundry list of, of items here to, to show you what we've been working on. So let's hit the ground running here. But normally I have a disclaimer, it's on here, but I'll have to put it back on here. Essentially, Trade Ideas is not a registered investment advisor. We're a software technology firm. We create the most incredible idea generation stock market software, but we are not a registered investment advisor. So please don't look to us for investment advice. Uh, this slide right here lets you know that for five consecutive years, we have made the Inc. 5000 uh, fastest growing company. So we're pretty proud of that. We've been doing this for, for about 20 years now. So we're not new to the block, but we have not stopped innovating and not stopped creating um, technology for you guys to use. It's going to help you harness the market. So guys, the first thing I want to let you guys know is you should definitely go to our website and download the latest beta version. I'm going to be talking about some things that probably aren't even in the beta yet, but the beta version has a tremendous amount of new functionality in the software. We've been spending a lot of time on the stock races. We've added logos to that. Uh, we've been enhancing our brokerage plus. We've been enhancing our charting, uh, market explorer, and I'll go I'll go through all of those uh, as we progress through the presentation. Uh, we do have faster chart data or faster chart data. We also have faster top list data that we've integrated into the software. Uh, we're also starting our market data earlier than we have previously. Uh, this is probably about two months now that we've we've done that. But I want to let everybody know that we are on the West Coast. We're starting it at one o'clock and on the East Coast three hours later. Chart customization, we really do it. We're doing a lot of enhancements to the chart. You can really shape that chart to, to the type of experience that you want to see, uh, different types of charts and the different color schemes that you can apply to it. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the charts today because we've done some, well, we've got a new piece of functionality that's going to be coming out in the next beta, and that's going to be the ability to compare symbols uh, on top of the main symbol that you're looking at. So if you want to look at how this current chart compares to the SPIs or the Qs or another stock in its own sector, well, you can do that, and it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, we're working on the AI as well. So not only are we working on always enhancing the different strategies, but also the visual aspect of the AI. And we've done some, some numerous things to the chart that help you visualize the trades that are called out from the AI, like where that stop is, what the risk assessment is for that, depending upon what um, type of trade size you're, you have dialed into your software, because you can configure that. And so once you set that up, the chart's completely interactive to those values uh, when you pull it up. So let's close the presentation. We'll get back to the pricing and, and finish up when we're done. Let me just start off with a little bit of a, of a demo. I know that I think it was 60% of you have uh, subscriptions and 40% don't. So kind of a good mix here. Um, like I said earlier, Trade Ideas is really the best idea generation tech out there. And there are a lot of different ways that you can get this information in real time as you're trying to navigate the market. We've got a lot of different visualization windows, top list windows, and every window is indicated what type it is by that icon in the upper left hand corner so if it's got a t up there that's a top list and that's really a ranked list of stocks but it's more than really just a list you can configure this with different filters associated with it different sort orders what we're looking at here in the upper left window we're just looking at the most uh the stocks that are up and down the most in the post market today and it gives you about 100 different symbols in here it's that's customizable as well you could have it look at a fewer uh, sample size, you could have it look at more. Everything's done with a right-click menu here. And uh, if you if you don't know what to do when you're on a window, if you just right-click, it's going to give you that context-sensitive menu of the different options that you can perform. Another window that we're looking at here in this After Hours Movers, this is a, a channel that we're looking at. It's the After Hours. You can see how it, it has that on display on the channel. And in this particular window, it's our multi-strategy window, which is really a compilation of a variety of different alert windows, kind of all rolled up into a single window container. But in this window right here, I've got 
five different strategies that we're looking at. They're all color coded uh, specific to the strategy. You can always highlight, hover over the particular strategy and let you know what that color code is. Uh, so if any one of these uh, strategies trigger an event, and these are all chronologically triggered events, if something happens, it's gonna populate right at the top of the window. Stock racing, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but the stock racing is a real new innovative way to look at action of a stock in real time. It's not looking, I guess the best way to explain is it, when you start a race, it's really looking at how all the stocks in that race are doing from the moment in time that you've started that race. So you could have stocks that are up 10%, 5%, 1%. Uh, if they meet that filtered criteria for what you have in this stock race, they're all gonna start out really at zero the moment you hit the, hit the start or, you, or that race has started. And depending upon how you have it configured, we're looking at a 10 minute race right here, uh, but depending on how you have it configured, it could be looking at a particular time frame or it could be looking at a particular value. Maybe you wanna see a race where you wanna see the first person or the first stock to move up 1%. Or you can do that with volume too. Maybe you wanna see the first stock to move up two relative volume points and really capture something when relative volume is starting to kick in. Well, you can do that very, very nicely with the races right here. And um, like I said, I'll talk a little bit more about that because some of the enhancements that have gone into the version that you're looking at here are pretty intense and pretty nice. So the charting, the charting is another another component of trade ideas. And for probably about 10 years, we were operating this business without any charts in the software. It was pure idea generation used to link with your brokerage application. But since then, we've really brought in a lot of different components and, and turned trade ideas into a, a full service platform, if you will. So the charts I'll, I'll dig into a little bit later because there's some functionality like I mentioned earlier that I want to talk about. Single stock window over here on the right really just gives me a deep dive into a particular stock that I'm looking at. Everything's linked. So if I click on a stock, it'll update over here in the single stock window. The charts will update. Everything will, will update accordingly. And the single stock window, it's, it, it's kind of it's a really nice window because it has a lot of different functionality attached to it. We're looking at the deep dive, like I said earlier, right here, but we've also got news associated with it, uh, similar stocks, and you can take a look at stocks that are similar, not only from the price action, but you could also look at it from a competitive perspective. What industry or sub-industry group do they operate in? Uh, and then there's also a profile here where you can get a, a nice simple English description as to what that company does and, and what sectors and, and sub-sectors and industry group it operates in. So we have a lot of different channels over here. Uh, it's up to you to peruse what you want to look at. You know, you could start off the beginning of the day over in the pre-market channel where we're looking at stocks that are gapping up and gapping down and perhaps have some good pre-market action. So again, another couple top lists and a, a multi-strategy window to deliver that insight that's happening uh, in the morning. Another great channel is the explosive winners. And with all of our channels, what I recommend is not only just perusing the channel bar, but if there's something that you like, you can always make it part of your own layout, incorporate it into your own workspace, make it a, a custom channel if you want. Uh, and so for myself, like I always operate with my own window right here. This is my um, main window that I work from, but it's honestly, there are a variety of different windows in here that I borrowed from the channel bar from different channels, you know, like the alpha predator or the trade candidates or the derived data stream. So these are all available inside of the different channels that you have. And if you wanted to pop one out and copy it into your own layout, you can do it like this. You would just right click and you would duplicate it into a free floating mode. Now it's a free floating window and uh, you could save this to the cloud to archive it. So it's always available to you. Or if you wanted to open up a new doc, you can just open up a new doc window here. We'll call it new doc. I'll move it over a little bit to the side here. And then I'm just gonna right click in that window and I'm gonna duplicate it into the new doc. And there it is in here. And so as I start to add more windows, I can create my own workspace with the type of information, the type of stream uh, that I like, you know, because trading is a very personal thing. What one person does isn't always successful for the next person. So you have to find your own sweet spot. You have to find what works for you and then exploit that. 
All right, I'm going to pop over here to the questions and see if there is something here that I could answer real quick. So hold on just a moment, guys. Yeah, so so care to the with regard to the recent settings, there are some limitations to it. And you get to that through the configure. So on any of the windows, whether you're looking at an alert or a top list, uh, we've got this recent settings right here. And it does remember the windows that you were in. Um, but it's sometimes a little bit hard to find it. This is really a, a method of last resort to try to find a window that you were previously working on that you want to restore. And that's why I always recommend when there's a window that you like, something that you want to work on, right click on it, save it to the cloud. Now, when you're saving to the cloud, so I'll just save it right there, it's just going to save that one window there. But if I had done this inside of the, inside of the docked window, and I right click here and I go to save or share to cloud. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and you're gonna see that all of the windows inside of this dock are selected. Um, so like I said earlier, my, my preferred way is to, is to drop it into free floating, save it and then do something with it. But you know, it's really a personal thing. I could have taken this window right here and I could have duplicated it right into my new dock from here. So I could right click there and do that. And now I have two of them. Of the same window so now that it's in the dock i can manipulate it these are all tabbed right now and i can close the instructions but now i have, i have two tabs but maybe i want them to be side by side and again these are duplicates so it's not something i would do in real life but so I, i've got that and i could add a chart to that if i wanted to so we'll go new chart window now i have my windows opening up into free floating mode that is configured right here under options layouts it's right here open in a docked window and i have that unselected and as a result it opens into a a free floating mode for the longest time all the windows inside of trade ideas were free floating i think it was about a year and a half ago that we incorporated this docking mechanism that allows you to keep it into a container but and just right click here i can duplicate it in my new dock and then I can drop it where I want. And you're just basically dropping it in one of these panels right here. And there's my chart at the bottom. So that's how you can create uh, your own dock. If I wanted to make this a custom channel, I could do that. I could save this to the cloud, the entire dock. And then I could come over to my channel bar and I could edit the custom channels. And this is where I could go ahead and add that here. I could add the channel. I would go into my cloud find the layout that I want and just add it after picking my icon and it's available right here so I could pull it up at any time in the future. All right, let me see if there's something else here. So um, Liliana is asking if you can have a layout that's suitable for pre, regular, and post-market versus having to close and open other windows. And you can absolutely do that, but it's really how your configuration is set up. You know, if you're looking at a post-market configuration, it's not going to be doing much during the day. So it's real estate. It's taking up your screen space. So you have to decide whether you need that to be doing something for you during the day. Uh, if you don't, then you could create your own layout that's going to work in all different scenarios. Um, it's, it's really a personal choice, I think, is, is really the answer to that. All right, so let me kind of go on here. I'm going to start checking some things off of my list here. So let's, let's first of all, let's go to this chart right here, and let's talk about some of the things that are new into it. So when you right-click on a chart, the main area that you're going to want to go to is a select chart styles. A lot of these other things like time frame or create price alerts, these are things that you can also do from the uh, from the icon bar up at the top. But there's a lot of redundancy built in here and whichever is your preference to do it. So let's just select the chart style. And this is my main chart configuration. What I want to show you today is really this comparison tab on the chart style. So we're looking at OMER. Omeris Corporation here, but if I wanted to overlay, let's say the spiders, and I typically use that as my leading indicator just to kind of see how the overall broader market's doing. So if I had this up here and selected it and then hit OK, you're going to see exactly where the spiders 
are compared to this stock. So this is obviously an, an outperformer today. I mean, it was up really big, up 34%. So that's pretty significant. But if I scroll back, you can see right here where we're starting to compare, this start stock started to take off and the SPIs just pretty much have done nothing. So what I could do, another thing that I could do is I could right click in here and instead of price action, go to competitor. So now I'm looking at stocks that compete with this particular stock. So I'm gonna right click again and I'm gonna go to select chart styles and I'm gonna go to comparison. Now, I could add more here. I could change it right here, but I'm gonna show you a little trick of what we've done. So I'll just leave it where it was. If I come up here and I select that, I could go ahead and change it to another symbol. So in this case here, let's go ahead and pull up LXRX. It seems to be the top right here on the similar. So let's type it in, LXRX and hit enter. All right, so now we're looking at a comparison of that stock and how it compares here. You can zoom in, take a look. If I wanted to start the comparison at a certain time, I can click on this anchor icon and let's start it right about here. Go back four days, the beginning of the market. That's where we're gonna start the comparison and we can see here how it compares to that. And then if you want, of course, you can have additional up to five different symbols on here. I don't know that I want to see that many at one time, but you can do that. And you can get that look. Now, if I want to take this right click, I could go ahead and I could duplicate this into free floating, or I could grab this, pull it out. It's still part of this dock. So if I minimize this dock, this free floating window will go ahead and, and minimize as well. But I could always take it and put it back into the dock as well just by grabbing it. Now, depending upon where I move it, it'll go ahead and dock on in there. So that's our, our new compare um, symbols on the chart. We've also got a new icon that's here, and this is kind of a work in process. This is not complete yet, um, but this allows you to take your chart with all the annotations included on it and share it to social media. So if I right click here, or, yeah, left click here, um, and again, this is halfway complete. It's not fully complete. I have the ability to save this image. It'll save it as a, a PNG file on your, on your hard drive. Uh, you can also copy it. And we'll have other icons in here to send it to Twitter, um, True Social, different social media, Instagram, different sites out there that you'll be able to get that out there uh, with all your annotations in a real super easy way. So we've got the time frame up here. Right, so you can change your time frame. But like I said earlier, you can also do it right here from the right click menu. But probably the biggest thing that I do with the chart on a daily basis is I use the price alert functionality. Uh, and that's typically done. We have this bell right here, but I always do the right click. It puts me at the price point that I want. So depending upon where my mouse is, if I just right click at that point, it knows that my cursor was at $3.33 and I can create that price alert. I can put in a note. I typically don't put notes, but you can put a note in. And when that alert triggers, that note will pop up and you can be reminded of what you were looking at. And the latest feature that we've added in this version right here uh, that you'll be able to get next week, I'm anticipating probably a Monday or Tuesday beta release for it. Uh, we've got this new option here to only trigger or to allow it to not trigger during the after hours. So if you have this selected right here, it'll trigger any time that price threshold is exceeded. But if I go ahead and uncheck it, uh, it won't do anything after the market close or in the pre-market. And as soon as the market opens, if that trigger had, had occurred, it'll go ahead and let you know that. So that's new on the, on the price alert. I also want to spend a little bit of time on the market explorer. So that's from the new menu up here, market explorer. And we've been adding strategies here like a banshee and the important thing is to know that this help guide is here so i'm going to select it i'll bring this over here and as i scroll down we've really got a definition of all the different strategies that are available in the market explorer so 
So as you scroll down, not only is there the description, but it gives you a nice visual reference as to what you're looking for, or what that strategy is looking for. Some video on it. And we're continuing to update this because these strategies are, are really appearing very, very quickly. But there's some really interesting um, strategies like the gap and pullback or the gap fill. I think the gap fill is pretty interesting as well. So knowing that that's there, you operate this window by right clicking on it. And this is all done from the server. So you don't really configure anything. We do all of this. In fact, a lot of these strategies are strategies that you really just can't configure using the predefined alerts and filters that we have available. So if there's something that you're looking for that you're not able to configure in trade ideas, shoot our support staff an email and maybe it can appear here in the market explorer for you. So if I do like the gap up fill and I pull something like that in, um, let me make this just a little bit bigger so that we can look at it. And I want to get rid of some of these compares. All right, so all right, we want to look at the gap fill strategy right here. So the first one that comes up, and I'll show you what it's looking for here. So obviously there was a gap that occurred, and that gap got filled right here. And at that point, it triggered that alert to let you know that the gap was filled. And oftentimes that's used as some type of support, or if it's a reverse scenario, it would be some type of resistance. So um, it's a really good way to look at um, gaps. You, you, you may have missed that particular trade and it gapped up and you're like, okay, well, let's wait for it to come back. And this is the type of strategy that will um, find that type of event. So you can see that we've got a lot of different strategies right here. And all you really do is just Go ahead and select it and it'll go ahead and, and give you that information right here some of these operate in real time like this one right here looks like it's up, up, updating every 15 minutes so on, on the 15 minute time interval you'll get an update with new symbols coming through so everybody please know that that's available to you to use as well all right let's talk a little bit more about the stock race we're on the explosive winners. We're looking at um, a stock race right here. These are all the stocks that have done very, very nicely today. Um, and specifically, we're looking at the stocks that have the biggest gain from the open. Uh, you can really configure this any way that you want, but let me show you how, how it works. Uh, and maybe we'll just kind of start off with this. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna, it's a little confusing to look at everything I have here. So I'm gonna duplicate this into free floating and I'm gonna minimize these guys right here. All right, so I've got a list here of stocks, biggest gainers from the open. What you would do is you right click on here to launch your real-time stock race. So this is launched out of a top list window or you can launch it from the toolbar, but it's all being fed from the top list data. So let me launch that. So now we're presented with a configuration screen where we need to tell it what is it that we want. Now you guys can go to the channels and you can take a look at all the stock races that we have. We've got a race and pretty much every channel and you can see how we've got them configured just by right clicking on it and saying show race setup and you can see how we have it set up in here but I'm going to show you guys kind of from scratch how you would do it to make you hopefully a little bit more comfortable with this and how you can set it up and then get value after out of it after it's running so two different ways we can look at this race we can do it based on time and we'll set up a number of minutes to run or we can do it based on value uh, and a good way based on value is maybe you want to see a stock that moves up 50 cents. Now, I don't really do it like that because I trade stocks of all different price points. So percentage is probably a better way for me to look at it and probably for most people, unless you're unless you're trading just a particular dollar range of stocks. Um, and something like this, I could say, you know, I want that stock. I want to see of all these candidates that are um, really strong from the open today. I want to see now which one is going to move up. 2% the fastest. So it'll give me a real-time race of who's moving on a price action basis, but I could also do it on relative volume. And these fields right here are all based upon your columns that you have in that top list. So it's important that if you wanna run a race on something 
to make sure you have the data point visible or available in a column in that top list. So I think for this purpose, this will be fine because we're really just working on um, change from the open percent. That's what we want to do. And then delta, so change from the open percent, I've got two different options. So maybe I want to see the race, the first one to get to, I don't know, um, up 10%. I would do total then. And my target value would be 10%. So I would put 10 right here. I, for the most part, typically do a delta race. And a delta race is really looking at time. I usually do a time. But it's looking at, it's kind of starting everybody at zero and seeing who changed the most during that race. And that's a delta race right there. And now you have to decide the sort order. So those race icons that you see, those stocks that are in the race, how are they gonna be ordered on that race? And if you have it set up as delta value, that means the winner is always gonna be on top. So you could have a race of 20 participants and only have a small window just looking at the top guys because that's what you wanna see. I'll show you how that works in a bit. Uh, descending or ascending, uh, if it's descending, I'm gonna be looking at the leader, the, the ones with the highest value on top, lowest value on the bottom, ascending would be the inverse of that. The replace cards option is pretty cool because if there's a stock that comes into this top list after the race starts that is worthy of being in one of the top rankings here then replace cars will and they're not all cards anymore because they're icons so i need to think about how we're gonna term that but um, it'll go ahead and drop off the loser and bring on um, integrate into this race the new participant that is is doing very well i can have an inverse race where i'm looking for the biggest loser and if you go to like the s p um race that we have available, you'll see S&P up and S&P down, uh, and we get to the down by hitting this biggest loser wins. So I usually have replace car selected, although it's not always necessary, but I like that one. Uh, the auto rerun is going to automatically restart the race as soon as it's completed. It'll display the winner up here, and then it'll start the race again, and really just continuing to mine the data for you. Auto start on load is what we have selected for channels so that when you pop into a channel that has a race, it'll automatically start. You can have it set to auto start at a particular time. Uh, maybe you're just looking at the last hour of the day and that's when you want to start a race. Then you could set that up um, to start at that time as well. And I usually, we've just incorporated logos into the software and um, I think it makes for a little bit more of an interesting race personally, but uh, we did start off with the cars because it really had the, the car mentality. We're looking for a race, but this seems to be a little bit more interesting in my opinion. And this replay, we've also made the replay a little bit easier. This is also a work in process. We're continuing to enhance this particular piece of functionality. But uh, if you wanted to look at the race today, you could replay a race today. If you want to replay the race from yesterday, like over the weekend, you'll be able to see what happened on Friday. And and always have some live data that, that's interesting um, for you to look at and view. So let's just, you don't really need to have that set and I'll show you how the replay works. Uh, and let's just go ahead and start the race. So the other thing, I guess I didn't tell you about the race lane. So you can always have up to 10 uh, participants in here, uh, but then depending upon how tall your window is, so if I make this as tall as it can go, um, I can just keep adding participants till it stops me. So there it stopped me. Now I can start the race. All right, so now the race is going and um, you know, it's after hours, so it's not quite as interesting as it is during the, uh, the normal hours. But uh, in this version here that you're looking at, we did make a, a little bit more of a data display here where you can see not only the last, but the change in dollars and percent um, made the logo or the icons and logos a little bit bigger. Um, and then after a race, so actually what I want to do is let me go ahead and duplicate this while it's running. I just want to do a quick one minute race. So I'm going to go to show race setup. I got to stop the race to make a change to it. And what I want to do is I just want this to run very quickly. So I'm going to just set it up for one minute and we'll start that. All right, while that's running, I want to show you something else. So I've got my one minute race right here. I've got my 10 minute race right here. 
um, while that's building, I want to pull up this window right here, which is the biggest gainers of the week. Now, for the guys that have a premium subscription, you have access to the back testing tool. The back testing tool is an event based back tester. It's called the Odds Maker, uh, and it allows you to really um, optimize and refine a strategy based on the historical results of that strategy. You can do a lot of things with that. You could take it, you could automate it inside of Brokerage Plus. You could keep it as just a, a visualization window right here so that when something appears, this isn't the window that I want. One sec. File, load from cloud, slam into the 50. All right, so this is the window that I want. In order to backtest something, it has to be an alert window. It can't be a top list. It has to be an event-driven uh, type of window. So we'll let this build a couple more as, as we go into this. So we'll right-click in here. We've got this history function. So I could show you the results that triggered for today. Um, this is obviously giving me some duplicates. If I wanted to look and see exactly just what symbols appeared here, here's a little trick. If you go to Properties, you're not going to see it. It's view mode is what I'm selecting. Let me move this over here so you see it. I'm going to right click on here. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to select view mode and I'm going to do group and sort by. All right, now I'm going to do group and sort by symbol and hit OK. So now what I have is I just have the list of symbols that triggered um, for today in this particular strategy. So let's do a back test. Let's see exactly. Well, before we do the back test, let's take a look at it. It's a pretty simple one. I can do this in a couple ways. I could look at the icons here, hover over each tooltip and see what it is. I could go to my window specific filters, hide the unused and take a look and see all these settings right here. Maybe the easiest way would be to go to the summary and see, I'm just looking for a new high event. The stock has to be between 10 and 180 and these are the filters that are in place. So not too many filters, I think eight of them or so. So it's a pretty um, modest strategy right here. Um, let's go ahead and, and run the back test on it. So you do that from an alert window. If you right click, you can go to back test strategy right here. And this is where you give it the instructions. I mean, it, it's this software is always listening to you, waiting for you to tell it exactly what you want. Now, this is already preset for me here because I've already done it earlier. But essentially what it's doing is it's avoiding the first hour of the day. So this is my entry. When can I enter a, a position? If it triggers in the first hour, I'm not getting in. Uh, it looks like the way this is set up, if it triggers in the last four minutes, I'm not getting in. I probably don't wanna trade the last hour or initiate a trade, at least during the last half hour. So let's set it right there. Uh, risk management, this is where you can tell it where you want your profit target to be. In this case, it's gonna be, if it moves 7%, you're getting out. And right here, if it um, moves 2% down, you're getting out. So if it goes against you 2% out, this is a good risk reward ratio right there. Uh, advanced, I'm doing the back test here for 31 trading days. I think there are 20 trading days in a month. So like a month and a half right here. Um, what else do we have? And that's it, just we're gonna go ahead and simulate the cell. This is a cell right here. So visualize it, we've got a daily chart. Uh, we've got a stock that's moving up, making a new high and essentially bouncing into the 50-day the SMA. So we'll go ahead and hit that. And what it's doing now is it's going through that window and essentially anticipating that you'd be buying or that you'd be selling the stock anytime that this triggered. We're only gonna do it one time on each symbol per day. Uh, and it's gonna go ahead and crunch this and it's gonna give me a lot of metrics when it's done. One, it'll tell me if this is something that I should consider as a strategy. and and then more detail, it'll give me a, a lot more um, granular information as well. So just real quickly, what we're, what we're looking at here is we're looking at uh, some of the metrics, a profit factor of four, that's a 4.25. That's awesome because it's telling you that the sum total of all the winning trades is 4.25 times the sum total of all the losing trades. So it's, um, well, it's a ratio, the sum total of winning over the sum total of losing. So it's a, a four to one ratio, which is pretty good. In this sample set of a month and a half, there were 165 trades, just about 60% of those were winners. So that's a pretty good ratio there as well. If you go to the average winner to loser, this is where it's phenomenal because the average winner is $2.60 and the average loser is about 90 cents. That's another great risk reward ratio right there. 
and it tells you what the return is. Essentially, if I started with 50,000, I would not be able to, um, to do this entire strategy right here. I wouldn't be able to make every trade in here. In order to make every trade in here, and not just today, but over the sample set of the, the 30 trading days, I would actually need $289,000 to uh, incorporate the strategy based on my share size of 100 shares of trade. Let's, let's, let's move this around, manipulate it a little bit so that perhaps it's a little different. So let's say I'm gonna commit $1,000 to mm -hmm. it. So if I committed $1,000 to every trade, well, now I have something that I could, I could do, right? With a $50,000 count using no margin, I could go ahead and implement this particular strategy. So starting off with $50,000, um, a month and a half later with this strategy employed, I would have 52,462. Now that's after um, commission and slippage, or I just have it dialed in as commission right here, which is essentially a dollar a trade and then a penny a share. And you could in real time, you know, you could change this and then it'll adjust your chart in real time. So if I'm paying five cents a share, this is how it affects it. Um, and, and because maybe I wanna use a two to one margin, maybe $2,000 per trade would be mm -hmm. more applicable for me and I could really use the advantage of the statistical information to get me to just under 55,000 um, after a month and a half using this. And there, there are a couple calendars on here. So if you're hovering over a calendar, it's superimposing where that is on here. So as I move it, you can see exactly how it's affected on there. I can go to the previous month and do the same thing. You know, this guy right here is deep green, which lets me know it's an incredibly profitable day. A lot of trades took place during that day. There were 24 trades. So that might be more than I would want to take. But um, if I look at the, the distribution of it, boy, the loser is very, very small. And winners are pretty consistent. So, I mean, this is a really, this is a good strategy um, on here. If I go to the, the bigger calendar view, I really get the same information, just a little bit bigger. The optimization, there's not a whole lot to optimize on this strategy, but this is where you can really take a, a mediocre strategy and make it incredible. And you can do it based on price, time of day, and all the other filters that we have. Just a quick explanation how it works. Um, we're, lo we're looking at stocks between zero and $180 for this strategy. And, and right here with a price interval of 20, it breaks it down into $20 increments here so between 0 and 20 20 and 40 40 and 60 60 and 80 this gives me the data distribution of how these um, trades performed so if i look at stocks between 0 and 20 i had a profit factor of one so equal winning over equal losing i lost 37 or i won 37 percent of the time i lost 63 percent of the time my average winner was very small and my total percentage was very, very small of this, 24 trades in that sample set. So by looking at this data, maybe it behooves me to not even take stocks below $20 in this. If I wanna get some more detailed view, I could change the price yeah. interval and look at between 10 and 20, 20 and 30. So it looks like my I do have a minimum price in here. If I hover over it, my minimum price is 10. So. Uh, this breaks it into those intervals as well. Maybe I don't want to trade the 10 to $20 interval and I could get rid of that. So if I right click in here, I could set the minimum price. Well, that's not where I want to right click. I want to right click here. I want to set the minimum price to 20. So if I right click, I can set the minimum value of price to 20. It'll automatically go into that window, open the configuration up, find that filter that I was right clicking on, put the 20 in there for me and then I can just acknowledge it and hit okay. So now this sample set's gonna be gone. If I was to run this again, I would have nothing between 10 and $20. That's a kind of a basic way to explain it. Um, but if I go to the optimization area and go to, well, we can do the same thing with time of day, but this is, this is all pretty good. The real power is in the other filters where I can drill into all the filters that we have in trade ideas that are populated here and see exactly how would it be if I didn't want to take a one minute RSI less than 66? Well, I would lose 13 trades 
and this is the sample set I would lose. And you can really get so much information just by moving down this, these different filters and see exactly you know, how that data looks. Again, this is a pretty good strategy, so I would be very, very surprised to find, you know, like a big group of red right here. And, and when you do, that really clearly tells you that you don't want those stocks in the 20 day range that are greater than 18, if that was where it was. So it, it's really talking to you and giving you all kinds of information here. So I kind of went off into the weeds in the odds maker, but the odds maker is super powerful because what it's used to do, it's used to drive uh, our AI. So not only can you make your own um, optimized strategies, but if I bring up a new uh, doc channel bar and I go into the, the Holly AI channel, um, this shows the automated signals that are being called on a daily basis for uh, our premium subscribers. So it looks like there were four signals today um, that were called. And you can see the distribution of them. Looks like they all kind of just fell back at the end. I mean, the market moved down quite a bit at the end and looks like the, the profitability did here as well. But let's take a look. You know, you could see that in this mode here, when you started off, profitability went all the way up to about $300 and then petered off through the trading day. So very quickly in this move right here, did we get this move up here? And then nothing else seemed to hold together, but there was great opportunity in that. And essentially at the beginning of the day, we start off with a blank slate right here. So we don't know what signals are going to be called. But based on the strategies are, that were made available from the previous day's optimization. So there were four different strategies and multiple signals could occur out of each strategy. And, and in real time, it's giving you this information right here. So we can go through a couple of the calls and see exactly how they performed. So let's kind of zoom in a little bit and it gives you this real time view. And you can, if you click on it, you can see exactly the number of shares that uh, you traded. And that's based on tools, options, AI trade size. So this is based on losing a hundred dollars. So based on where that stop is, if I get stopped out, uh, I'm anticipating to lose a hundred dollars on it. Let's go ahead and let's do $2,000 per trade, which is pretty reasonable and that's kind of what we did for the odds maker let's go ahead and save that so by doing that it increased the uh the share count for this particular trade but none of that matters here you can see that this blue line is where the signal was called out it immediately went up it came back to that initial entry point and then spiked up what was that another five cents or so maybe six cents and then came back down. So that's a pretty cheap stock, and that's why there's so many shares involved in it. Let's go to Oxy right here and take a look at, at that and see what happened. Okay, I'm gonna need to shut down and restart. I'm on a dev version, and anytime this goes yellow, I'm today when it happened, I had to restart. So let me do that real quick, guys. not just a death, I have to kill it. There we go. So this will be my last thing. I'll take a couple of questions before we tie this up here. All right, back to the new doc channel bar, Holly AI. Oxy. And so let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit right here. In fact, I could make this maybe a 15 minute chart to make it a little bit more legible. But here was the signal called out pretty early in the morning. You can see exactly the candle that it was called out on. The stock really did something similar, it moved up here another point and a half. So it had a really good up move and then just settled marginally above the, uh, the entry price. And it gives you this risk and reward based upon how you have it configured, the number of shares in here. So at 36 shares, I was only risking $36 right here uh, with a reward um, of $110. So that's based on the, the view of my chart. So if I was to zoom out even more, 
This right here is the profit target and that's set at 335. I'm zooming by the way, by holding the control key down and using my mouse scroll wheel to do that. I could also do the control key in my left and right arrow to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek here at your questions. Yes, the chart enhancements, Mark, are for both standard and pro. So Stephen, uh, regarding uh, filters and alerts, we have paused that just for a little bit because we're in the process of migrating uh, from a server farm that we have in San Diego uh, to the cloud. Uh, and once we put everything into the cloud, which is probably about a month, month and a half away, uh, we're gonna open this up for a lot of new alerts and filters that we have in the pipeline. So Ramu, you cannot do options trading, but I do have some options data that could help you with that. I've got this options channel right here, which takes a look specifically at unusual options volume. We have a modicum of options data. Essentially, it's all drilled down into the root stock, so I don't have different strike data, um, but we're looking at uh, the number of calls, the number of puts, uh, and then the most uh, beneficial column here or data point filter, however you want to call it, is our percent options volume today, which really lets you know how it, it's trading in an options perspective compared to normal. So, for instance, CLAR was doing 2,000 times its normal or 2,000 percent of its normal options volume today and you can see where that came in if it came in on the on the call side or the put side i don't think i have a call a put column here but i could bring that in and if you just right click in the, and go to configure go to search and type in options it'll let you, let you know the different filters the six different filters that we have pertaining to options So Liliana, you're asking about the, uh, the ability to remove the logos from the stock race. I don't have that yet, but that'll be an option in the future. Yeah, we're gonna be incorporating, where did it go? We're gonna be incorporating this data set right here, including the ability to have uh, just an icon, just this black area right here into all of our other windows as well. So if you wanted to uh, you know, incorporate an icon into a top list, you can do that. If you wanted to incorporate uh, this multi-function cell into a top list or alert window, you'll be able to do that as well. Why are you sorry? I need to be sorry. Um, let's see what else. 30 second time frame on, I'm assuming you're talking about the chart. You're the first person to have asked for that. Um, I'll never say never, right? you, you're just the first person to ask for it. So it, it's certainly possible. Um, I, I do need a little bit more interest in it before I do that, but um, that's certainly possible. All right, guys, last call for questions. If I missed it and it's up above here, fire it away again so that I can see it here at the bottom of the list. I'd be more than happy to, uh, take those for you. All right. No problem. Let me look at my list here and see if there was anything that I missed. Ah, oh, there's one thing that I missed. Let's see if I can show it to you guys. Of course it stopped <laughs> because it's after hours. Let me see if I can kick it into gear here. All right, so we're always in the lab doing things. We're always experimenting with visualization, with data, um, different ways to bring you information. We've got something in the works called 3D top lists. That's not what this is at all. This is really just using some, some graphical algorithms, taking our logos and doing some fun stuff with it. But it's, this is very much like our compare count. So we've got a window um, called a compare count right here. And let's see here, configure real quick. All right, we've got post-market and pre-market in here. So let me just hit okay. And essentially what this is doing, this is a window based on the strategies that you've put in it. We, you can put a bullish and a bearish strategy. 
And based on that data, it's going to let you know who's really winning. Is the, are the bulls winning or are the bears winning? Who's having more highs? Who's having more lows? So you get the ticker, but you also get this bar right here and you can get this visual graph. This is kind of a similar thing that we're looking at here, uh, but this is really just kind of a, a visual reference as to our stocks making highs and lows um, coming from the bear or the bullish side. So just some fun stuff that we're doing. We always like to keep things interesting and uh, the lab is always cooking up new ideas and, and new interesting things. Yeah, hey, I'm glad to hear that, Harry. I'm glad someone's using that compare accounts. It's an interesting window. It, a lot of people don't know what it does. And, and until you really find um, the value for it, it kind of goes hidden. But once you use it, it, I think there's some really good, interesting information in it. Yeah, I can share the, the biggest gainers from the open alert table. Open alert table. Probably happened. Did I close the, the window? So the biggest gainers, I mean, if you just go to the explosive winners right here, biggest gainers from the open. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this into free floating. I'll right click, I'll save or share to cloud. I will save and share and copy that link and I'll drop it in the chat and then I'll get the other one for you as well. And the other one I think was in my cloud. I'll share that. Really glad to hear that, Harry. I mean, I think, you know, the races, they, they kind of seem gimmicky to a lot of people, but honestly, it's, it couldn't be further from the truth. There's really so much value in the data that it's conveying. So very glad to hear that. All right, so I shared that. Did I miss one of them? I think we got them. All right, Sam, there you go. All right, let's bring back the PowerPoint. Hopefully I didn't close it. All right, guys, we are a business and we take a subscription payment for our revenue. Uh, you can sign up either as a, a premium or a standard subscriber. We break this down here by the day. So for the standard, it's $3.90 a day. If you want to pay by the year, you know, we give you a nice discount there at $2.90 a day is what it breaks down to. And the premium, with the premium, you get the AI, the odds maker, the RBI, GBI. Uh, there are a few other thing you get i can't really remember but um for that it's seven dollars and fifty cents a day um do the annual prepay on it it drops it down to six dollars and twenty cents a day um guys twenty percent off the first month or first year of trade ideas uh, or if you're upgrading uh, use the the promo code fast data to get twenty percent off you can go tradeideas.com forward slash price to get there we do daily support sessions and we've got so much support inventory for you guys we've got a great support staff but um, every day between nine and ten o'clock uh, pacific time or 12 and 1 eastern time we have a breakout session uh, where a, a team member from our support group usually it's one of our traders uh, gets in and, and hosts this session it's very interactive so if you want them to demonstrate something or you have a question on some functionality this is a great place to go uh, Barry hosts a trading room every single day. It's a free room. I suggest everybody take a look and see if it's for you. Uh, there's a, it's a great way to learn the software. It's a great way to interact with other traders. These guys are all trading uh, real money and they're doing it in real time right here. Barry's sharing his desktop and answering questions along the way as well as doing trading. So uh, this is a great, a great avenue to, to get some more information on trade ideas. And uh, we've got a, a, a long group of people that have been in this room for, for quite some time. So there's always a group that goes in and out, but there's really a core group um, of traders here that are making incredible calls. So I recommend you go to there. You can get to it just right from our website. The little menu bar at the top will take you to the trading room. 
So we've got a couple different integrations with Brokerage Plus. This is our interactive brokers integration. You can get more details on that from this link down here at the bottom. Uh, but this is the, the broker that we've been working with for the longest with our, our Brokerage Plus interface. So one thing I didn't talk about today, guys, we have this Brokerage Plus interface that allows you to trade in real time with interactive brokers or E-Trade. And we do have a couple more brokers that we're bringing on. Uh, but we also have a simulated trading and this is good for uh, standard and premium i highly recommend it because it allows you to experiment with your trading styles trading size different strategies and do it without risking any money but having um, having it act exactly like it would um, had you been trading real money all except for the emotions that you probably wouldn't be experiencing because when you're trading live there's a totally different emotional content involved than when you're in simulated, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, use simulated trading because I do it all the time in addition to trading live because I like trying different things out. And then this next slide here talks a little bit about our new integration with E-Trade. E-Trade is our first zero commission broker. So if you don't want to pay commissions, you can open up an E-Trade account and trade directly with them. A lot of um, great ways to get a hold of us. This is our YouTube page right here. Um, we're on social media. Um, we've got a couple different Twitter accounts right here. Here's our Facebook page. This is our phone number. The best way to get a hold of us, however, is through our email, info at trade-ideas.com. We also have live chat on our website. That's another really good way to interact with our team. So we are very, very available for you guys. So my presentation is done. I'll, I'll look back and see if you guys have any other questions. So TD Ameritrade, we're, we started developing the TD Ameritrade and their API had some issues. Um, so we're waiting on either for uh, TDA to fix that or for us to come up with a way to mitigate it. Um, but right now there is TD Ameritrade is not uh, inside or integrated with Brokerage Plus, but you could connect to it through our external linking so essentially our external linking allows you to click on any window or any symbol in trade ideas and have that update a third-party application like could be your thinkorswim application so you click on something in trade ideas and all the windows that are linked in your thinkorswim order entry panel charts level two whatever it is that you use will be linked right there so uh, not all is lost, but there is really a lot of benefit that you get out of the integration in Brokerage Plus, especially from the visualization of seeing your um, P&L um, from the beginning of the day. So you can see how that P&L was affected by, by all the market action. All right, guys, uh, presentation is done. Thank you so very much for joining me here, spending an hour. Um, please reach out if you have any questions. My name is Brad. You can hit me up directly, brad at trade-ideas.com. Scott, are you still there? Yep, everything yeah. is good. Uh, the recording will be up later on. You get an email reminder tomorrow with the link to the playlist where to find it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.